these great protected areas, they have lots of threats. It is not too late to save what's here. There are immense benefits that accrue from protecting our natural resources. And you cannot do it alone. Since its inception, the Tusk Awards has shone a much needed spotlight on the work of some extraordinary men and women who have dedicated their lives and energy to protecting Africa's precious natural heritage. Africa is in the front line of conservation. People are getting killed in the name of conservation. What they are protecting is one of the great treasures of the world. It's not about wildlife to be conserved by other people. It is our own responsibilities as a community. I owe my great-grandchildren this wildlife. They should also enjoy in their lifetime. And a very warm welcome to the 2021 Tusk Conservation Awards, coming to you from the heart of London. Wherever you're tuning in from, we're so delighted you could join us. And an extra special welcome to everyone watching in Africa. I'm here in the Hyde, keeping a watchful eye over proceedings. And you'll see behind me that many guests have already arrived for this evening's ceremony. It's the first time in two years that people have been able to come together to celebrate some truly inspirational champions of conservation and there's a real sense of anticipation about tonight. Tusk's royal patron, the Duke of Cambridge, is expected shortly on the Tusk orange carpet. But in the meantime, let's take a look at some of the other guests arriving earlier this evening. Having His Royal Highness as the Royal Patron of these awards means that the stories of people who are dedicated in their everyday lives without any accolades or celebrations or anyone watching and it puts their stories on a global stage. Tusk Awards celebrate the true heroes of conservation and of sustainability. I am an ambassador for Tusk and I'm so proud because it's such a brilliant charity. It does such important work. And tonight we will celebrate people who literally dedicate their lives to conservation. Um, I'm, I'm actually looking forward to finding out the stories of why these uh, winners have uh, been uh, announced as winners because you know their conservation work, the effort they've been putting in behind the scenes is, uh, you know, nobody sees it and so actually this all brings that to light. I think, you know, with the lack of tourism in all these areas and, and the lack of funding, it's now more than ever that these guys need to be in the spotlight. So to be able to come here this evening to celebrate those people who are you know, right at the forefront of conservation is fantastic. So plenty of people have come tonight to pay tribute to our five incredible finalists who've travelled here from Nigeria, Ghana, Madagascar and Namibia, especially for the ceremony. As you can imagine, it's been a whirlwind trip for them so far and somewhat colder than they used to. We managed to catch up with them earlier today during their dress rehearsal to see how they were feeling about tonight. Tell me, how are you enjoying London? Yeah, I'm enjoying London very happy, very, very nice, yeah. I'm in London very happy, Anna. I've been here before and I know the cold, um, but coming back again is what I'm enjoying actually. I don't mind about the cold. So yeah, London is just the place where I want to be. Just to know that across Africa, people are championing conservation efforts and just to see all of the work or to learn from them all of the work they are doing in their own various countries and on different species they are working on. It's really inspiring to know that there are people out there just like me on the same journey and on the same course. I'm just so happy to be associated with them. I was good to learn about what they are doing and share experiences and share challenges and how we move forward together. 
I think my colleagues, our finalists and other award winners are doing some amazing work. I'm keen to look at their video and, and hopefully uh, to be inspired uh, by it. I'm also keen to meet the prince, see him on TV, so I'm looking forward to this. This is actually very special for me because I'm coming to receive my award, so I'm very happy and it's the first time that I could also bring my wife with me to London, so it's, it's really nice. A few moments ago, these were the scenes on the orange carpet as His Royal Highness, the Duke of Cambridge, arrived. The Royal Party is heading inside, which means the awards are about to begin. So we're going straight to the auditorium for the start of the ceremony with host Kate Silverton. Your Royal Highness, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, a very warm welcome to the 2021 Tusk Conservation Awards. Firstly, how wonderful is it to be able to gather here together in person this year? It's lovely to see you all. What a time to come together to affect change, to engage directly with the issues that we face. With the eyes of the world firmly focused on the protection of our planet after the recent COP26 and Earthshot Prize, it's encouraging then that we are able to be here tonight along with our five inspirational finalists to celebrate these true protectors of nature and custodians of our future. Our first award of the evening then is the Tusk Wildlife Ranger Award, sponsored by the Nick Morn Foundation. The award recognizes the dedication and commitment of an individual who works in the field on a daily basis to protect Africa's wildlife. This year's winner is Suleiman Saidu. <laughs> Doesn't he deserve that? Selfless, dedicated, brave, and exceptional. In many ways, it is his integrity which is his foremost virtue. Well, fighting corruption in Nigeria is a very difficult and a very dangerous thing to do. He has remained steadfast. His most laudable achievement has been the transformation of Yankari's Ranger Corps into a highly motivated, disciplined, competent, and widely respected force which protect Nigeria's largest elephant population. Before Suleiman joins us on stage to collect his award, let's see him in action. Lokacin da ina jin kaman aikin Panasonic sa da yake aikin ba ni kadai nake ba ina da abokanan aiki su ne yanzu suke sake bani shawarin cewa idan muka bari inda muka dora zai bace gara mu ci gaba mu bar mana baya don mu ma an bar mana saboda na baya mu su ma su mora gaba Suleiman is a selfless dynamic guy he is very adaptive, always open to new ideas, willing to try new things. He is one of the few rangers that were willing to abandon the old ways of managing conservation and wildlife to bring innovative ways, to work with communities, to bring in technology to change. Suleiman said, I'm working with Aiki Nani. I'm not a lady, I'm not a lady, I'm not a lady, I'm not a lady, I'm not a duk abin da ya kauce ma rashin ya sa rashin gaskiya su bashi kar su yi shi su yi gaskiya kawai to aikin zai ci gaba mun samu raguwan harbi a dajin nan da yawa sakamakon aiki da muka yi da shi tare da mu da kuma sauran ranjoji akwai yawan fulani ma ma su kiwo 
Abdi de sa muke ga aiki da suke da amfani. In gidan mu kadan mu ba za mu cin mana nasara ba dole sai mun hada kai da su. Saboda su suke kewaye da gandun daji. Sannan mutanen da suke zuwa mana barna a cikin gandun daji ne. Nasiba. Good, perfect. Suleiman spends lots of time here like myself in the field leaving his family away and he's always looking for helping wildlife, helping communities so that humans and wildlife can coexist in harmony. Abinda muke akwai zaga cikin jejin a ciki akwai haduwa da mutanen da suke kauyukan akwai haduwa da mutanen da suke kauyukan saboda mu fahimtar da su amfanin gandun dajin. So, abin da zan fada akan Suleiman da Allah ya bashi wannan matsayi suna fatan Allah ya sa mu sami ci gaba fiye da halin da muke ciki yanzu yanda kuke yi na kuma yi murna matuka da Allah ya bashi wannan matsayi muna tabbata yaro ne mai kwazo sani na da shi da kuma na fata abin da zai dora yanzu ya fi na abin da da yake yi zai je yi a tura shi wani wuri ina jin dadin hakan ma sosai sai dai in ce na gode rayuwar ranja yana da wahala ko kuma shi aikin ranjan ma karan kansa yana da wahala amma yana da amfani domin aikin ranja ne yake sa kawai yake taimakawa kuma yake tsare sauran dajin da ya rage a duniya da kuma dabbobin dajin da suka rage a duniya Now, to present Suleiman with his awards, it's my very great pleasure then to invite His Royal Highness to the stage. Your Royal Highness, ladies and gentlemen, please give a very warm welcome to our winner of the Tusk Wildlife Ranger Award, Suleiman Saidu. Royal Highness, ladies and gentlemen, I am greatly humbled and honored to be the recipient of the Top Wildlife Ranger Award for 2021. My sincere gratitude goes to Top and all the sponsors of this prestigious event. Our journey in Yankari has not been smooth. But together, we managed to stop elephant poaching. And the population is now showing sign of recovery. I did not make this journey alone, but as part of a team. My sincere gratitude go to my colleagues at Yankari Game Reserve and the Wildlife Conservation Society for training, mentoring, and equipment us. Many thanks to my supervisors, Nacha Geoffrey and Andrew Dunn, who pushed and guided me. Thank you to the Bauchi State Government. And lastly, to my dear understanding wife, <laughs> who, stay, who stays with our children while I am away in the field. I dedicate my award 
to all the heroes who died while protecting wildlife. Thank you all. Many congratulations to Suleiman, winner of the Tusk Wildlife Ranger Award. We'll be returning to the auditorium shortly for our second award of the evening. But before that, have you ever wondered how the finalists and winners are chosen from all the nominees? Well, earlier today, I spent a little time with two of our Tusk Award judges to find out. I'm delighted to be joined in the Hyde by Executive Director of the Environmental Investigation Agency, Mary Rice, and former Deputy Director of the Royal Geographical Society and Head of Earthwatch, Nigel Windsor, both members of the Tusk Awards judging panel. It's so nice to have you. Welcome to the Hyde. Mary, if we can start off um, by asking you, what makes a Tusk Award winner or finalist? What qualities are you looking for? So th I think the first thing is that they are all unsung heroes. Um, and there are so many people across Africa who, who are doing work, they get no recognition for it, but they all share very similar traits. So they are facing enormous challenges. Some of them work in really difficult landscapes, but they all have a vision of how they can actually make a difference. Um, they know that they face huge problems, but they take a step back. They look at strategically how they can make a difference to the problem around them and I think in especially now in all of the challenges that we're all facing um, the fact that you have these amazing people who aren't waiting for everybody else to do something but are thinking okay I can do something and so for me they are inspirational and they remind us that every person can make a difference and everybody should try you're so right, everybody can make a difference. And for Nigel, what stands out for you most about this year's winners and finalists? There are two things this year that really get me very excited. If you look at the geography of Africa, it's lovely to see the increasing numbers coming from West Africa. So there's a strong West African presence this year. Hooray. Also, just to see that these strong new conservation leaders in the women's movement is really coming across in through Africa. So we've got two very strong uh, winners on our list today. That must be very nice to see. No, no, it's, it's the future. Well, I'd like to ask you about the future and your hopes for the future of the awards of, of, of Tusk. Mary? So I think Tusk has come quite a long way. It's nearly 10 years old now. And as Nigel says, you know, we're getting much greater diversification across Africa. Um, we're getting more profile. And I think the more profile we can raise around the awards, the more attractive it is for sponsors so that we can increase the amount of awards that we can give to people and we can send a message to everybody else to show what Tusk has done and how much better it can be actually. And I think it is going to increasingly become a very sought after award. I agree with you, yes, I agree. Thank you so much for stopping by The Hyde and giving us a small insight into the work you do. It's been a pleasure to see you tonight. It's a pleasure. Thank you so much. Thank you. Some fascinating insights there from Mary and Nigel on the judges' role behind the scenes at the awards. What a rewarding job it sounds. And now, without further ado, it's time to find out who the judges have chosen as the winner of our next award. Our second award is the Tusk Award for Conservation in Africa, sponsored by Land Rover, which recognises an emerging leader in conservation. The judges shortlisted three finalists for the Tusk Award. Our first finalist is Caleb Ofori Boteng. Caleb is a champion for animals, perhaps considered um, less charismatic by, by some, but which are critical uh, to ecosystems. As West Africa's leading herpetologist, his work has resulted in the discovery of new species and several populations that were thought to be extinct. Through his NGO, Herp Conservation Ghana, he has raised nationwide awareness and is changing hearts and minds about the importance of amphibians. Let's find out more about Caleb's story. Fox are the least important thing in Ghana. They are slimy and ugly and not nice. Human consumption, increasing habitat loss. The government of Ghana has plans to actually mine the forest, to turn it upside down. People see the fox as a delicacy and they were eating them. 
cutting down the forest and burning it. I am horrified by the issue of extinction. I, I feel that I cannot stand by for species to go extinct. In Ghana, we don't have a lot of organizations like Help Ghana prioritizing conservation of amphibians. And so he has contributed significantly to the amphibian research and also conservation in the country. There's been several species, new species has been discovered as a result of his work. You hold the animal in your hand and then you know that you've never seen this before. It, it, just, it just gives you goosebumps and I, I, I really consider it to be a privilege. My father passed away when I was uh, very, very young. I always wish that I had the power to bring him back. And I see a lot of similarity between extinction and death. The Togo slippery frog is a critically endangered species outside government protected lands and so faces threats. We have about over 6,000 amphibian species in the world. About 150 of them, they have completely vanished from the surface of the earth. I was able to convince uh, a local community that traditionally hunted and, and ate frogs to not only stop eating the frog, but they have actually donated land to establish the first conservation reserve that was purely dedicated to critically endangered frog. Caleb's work has brought to the fore the conservation and changing the cultural perspective of amphibians in Ghana. Innovative approaches to conservation outreach has been one of the key components of Caleb's work. And one of the innovative approaches we use is called conservation evangelism. We will usually go to the churches based on the scripture that they believe and already understand. We reason out to them what that same scriptures or what that same Quran or what that same Hadith is saying about conservation. As a person, I've had the privilege to deliver uh, conservation evangelism to well over 20,000 people. And then we also train other people to do the same. Our local volunteers that we call the behavior change champions. These people have done more than five times what I have already done. I have met a lot of people in life, but Caleb is different. His humility, honesty, caring spirit is amazing. I, I try to be very optimistic. In 10 years, 20 years, I see that a lot of local communities are going to continue to support the conservation of amphibians and other wildlife species. Such beautiful films that we have here um, tonight. We'll turn congratulations to Kello, first of all. Our second finalist is Julie Razef Imanahak. She's um, a person with a deep concern for nature, also a love for and an understanding of people. And we all know, as we've just seen in Kaleb's film, that they go hand in hand, of course. And it's through her determination and charisma that her grassroots work has established four protected areas and preserved many species from fruit bats to frogs to baobabs. Now, as a young Malagasy woman, her work has influenced conservation leadership in Madagascar. She is a true inspiration to others. So let's take a look at Julie in action. I really love to walk in the forest, doing research where I get to see the lemurs and the chameleons and the frogs, baobab trees and bats. My journey into conservation started when I was 13 when we went to camp in the forest. At four o'clock in the morning, as we woke up, we heard the sounds of injury. And then we walked. 
As soon as we saw them, they started singing again. That was an amazing song. Madagascar for Cats is a local association created in 2005 to protect uh, the Malakasi threatened species and to improve the local livelihoods of Malakasi people. So the conservation challenge in Madagascar is the need to reconcile development and conservation. One change we aim to do is uh, downlisting the species on the IUCN red list. One of them is the golden mantel frog, which has been thought as critically endangered and now is evaluated as endangered. My We've seen the creation of uh, protected areas, which are the main habitats of the threatened species, and also the involvement of the young people who became the ambassadors of Lemur's conservation. When I was taken over in 2011, there was an image that organizations would only be led by men, generally foreigners. So it was strange as a young woman, Malakasi. I was afraid that we were not going to last five years, but we are still surviving for 10 years now. <laughs> Almost every day she is sacrificing to be able to carry out both sides of her life, the family and her job. She travels a lot away from Madagascar to learn more to be able to fulfill her duties and to be up to the challenge. Small changes we wanted to happen and has already happened. Getting the youth more excited and involved in the conservation and leading on development activities, as well as doing patrols. Big changes we want to happen is like the whole community getting together to protect the forest and being involved in the development as well. So there are small changes and big changes. We are getting there. Congratulations to Julie. Now, our final finalists for the Tusk Award is Rachel, Rachel Ikeme. As founder and director of the Niger Delta Forest Project, Rachel has successfully halted widespread uh, forest loss and saved two critical primate species on the brink of extinction. Her persistence in working in one of the most insecure regions in the world, building strong community relations, that thing again, establishing and managing two protected areas is highly commendable and deserves recognition. So let's see Rachel at work. In recent times, insecurity really came to the fore, even in the southwest Nigeria where they are bandits using the cover of the forest for their operations, kidnapping, and posing all sorts of threats to human life. So it has been doubly difficult for us to do our work. The encroachers, some are planting cannabis here, some are hunting. We need to get rid of them. She's there in the bush 
24 hours. A woman of substance who is ready to lay down her life for wildlife conservation. We really commend her. First, you've got to identify the areas that you think, where do the animals still exist? And where do they exist in sufficient numbers? Comprehensive surveys in many forests came first in all of Rachel's work, and then to figure out what might work best for a population of chimpanzees and the other for red colobus monkeys. We carry out conservation education in the schools, not just awareness, but increased excitement over species. Say, for example, the Niger Delta red colobus monkey. It's special, it's unique to, to not just these natural areas, but to this community. What information I want to tell you today? I want to tell you about ranger. We are doing conservation education beyond schools now. We are taking conservation education to the political class at the state level and at the federal level. We, we do policy advocacy. And just in the last year, she's managed to establish formal protected areas for both of those animals, a special form of Nigerian chimpanzee and the unique red colobus monkey. We have cordon off about 33.3 kilometers of the forest for this conservation purpose. They train their rangers and they are making appreciable progress. She knows what she's doing and she's doing it very well. We want to stop the extinction of species of animals that are very critical. We don't have any option but to make sure that we do intensive and extensive stakeholder collaboration, stakeholder engagement, and that is really what has brought us to this point. And then carrying them along every step of the way. Reflecting on what she has achieved in the last 15, 16 years, she really knew quite little and had done very little in conservation, and now she's regarded as one of the leaders in African primate conservation. It really is rather remarkable. I've come a long way. I wasn't qualified to be a conservationist in the first place, but I have managed to not just become a conservationist, but be able to convince people to become conservationists. You can start out on a path, and it would seem like you're a fish out of water, but you could really be the one who determines how the tide turns. A huge round of applause to these extraordinary champions of conservation. Once again, our three finalists, Caleb, Julie and Rachel. <laughs> now, as we know, there can be just one winner among them. And to make the announcement, it's my great pleasure to once again invite His Royal Highness back to the stage to reveal the winner of the 2021 Tusk Conservation Award in Africa. The winner for the 2021 Tusk Award for Conservation in Africa is Julie Raza Fimanahak.
I'm so delighted. <laughs> Your Royal Highness, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, first allow me to thank um, the Task Award and His Royal, Royal, Royal Highness for presenting me with this prestigious award. I've always been dreaming of uh, since it started because one of my friends was a finalist back in 2013, so I've been following. <laughs> 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 There's a Malagasy proverb which says, which literally means a best tree of which you can make a canoe was growing from the right soil. So for our event today, I would refer myself as, a, as the tree, and then my family, my friends, especially my team at Madagascar Avocats, and also our partners, funders, advisors, and mentors. They would be the soil um, which allowed me to be here today. So I extend my thanks to all of them, uh, the ones who are here tonight, and also the ones who are not here. This award is a reward for all the efforts we have done together, and an incentive to continue further and better. The Task Conservation Award, if I always refer to the, the proverb, would be like the rain falling on the tree, and you know what happens, they would go stronger and taller. So um, with this award, I would be taller, a taller tree under which people, especially the younger, uh, younger ones, the younger trees would be benefit from the, tr the from the shade. I probably won't be a canoe. Actually, if I was a tree, I would be a baobab because you can't make <laughs> baobab. But they produce really nice fruits, very um, good fruits for the food. Um, so I would continue to produce leaves that would fall and then become fertilizer. I would be a tree that produces fruits that animals and people could be feeding on. Uh, baobabs don't really put um, uh, woods, but then would be have branches where lemurs would be hanging on and then would be having food. So thank you very much um, for this award. And I would also like to thank and congratulate my fellow finalists and the award winners. It has been uh, only two days since we have been together, but it's a really um, nice to be with you, and together, I'm sure we are going to grow up as trees, as a forest. Um, <laughs> together, yes. Thank you. Everybody. Hot off the stage, I've been joined in the hide by Tusk Award winner Julie Razafamanahak. Julie, huge congratulations. Uh, fantastic you. to see you with your fantastic award. How did it feel the moment the prince announced your name? I couldn't believe it. Um, it was amazing. I loved both the, all the stories of the finalists, so uh, I loved all of them. I did. I thought it would like we all deserved it. Um, yeah. So I'm very proud, very honoured, and very pleased. And it came as a complete surprise, didn't it? Yeah, it was a surprise. Tell me a bit about the award grant and how it's going to help you continue your work. Well, the award grant um, is like 50,000 pounds, which is millions in Madagascar uh, money. So it would help Madagascar for Kadzi to grow further. We would have a stronger team and then we would explore the way how we um, uh, become financially autonomous um, and also the other parties supporting the youth conservation um, youth initiative we are already promoting in eastern Madagascar. So it sounds like it's going to make a really big difference. It will. While you're here, tell me a bit more about baobabs and what you love about them. The baobabs, um, they're really big trees. Um, there are nine species in the world, six of them are only found in Madagascar. Um, they, were about, um, they were the trees I've always been dreaming to um, hug. <laughs> and uh, work on before when I was a, as a child and to see there's one species in the west of Madagascar which I particularly like and we work on because it has uh, fruits that is um, 
very nutritious for people, uh, so it can generate um, uh, ecosystem services as well as food for people and income for local communities. How do you hope that winning this award will help inspire other Malagasy, particularly women, to follow in your footsteps? Well, being here and, uh, is already an inspiration that has been a dream for me and still like, that would be an email, like, a message I can convey to other conservationists in Madagascar of we can do things and we can do things better. Um, when I was uh, leading Madagascar for Kadzi, it has always been uh, thought that conservation organizations should be led by foreigners. Conservation is like, international, it's not for us, but it's our responsibility and yeah, I'll convey that message. Yeah. Well, congratulations. Thank you for joining me. You are a really inspirational woman and it's been fantastic to meet you tonight. Thank you very much Pleasure. for getting me here. <laughs> Pleasure. Now, you may not know this, but next year will be the 10th anniversary of the Tusk Awards, a landmark achievement. Over the last nine years, the awards have gone from strength to strength, highlighting and supporting some truly incredible conservation champions in Africa, as well as raising the profile of the invaluable work Tusk does. Earlier today, I caught up with Tusk CEO and co-founder Charlie Mayhew to see how things were going. Charlie, welcome to The Hyde. What a great spot you found here for this studio. It's a perfect spot and there's not long to go now. So how are you feeling? I'm really excited actually. You know, this is my favourite evening of the year. What a treat for you to take some of the finalists from Africa today to see the sights. Well, you know, we've been incredibly lucky uh, that they've even been able to come here this year. Uh, last year was a virtual event um, and only a few weeks ago we were still under the red list um, conditions, so we weren't too sure whether we'd get them here. But they're all here, which is fantastic, and uh, we took them on the London Eye yesterday afternoon, and this morning I took them on a cruise up the river. Um, it's been a beautiful day, so it's been perfect. Charlie, tell me, how have events of the last 18 months affected Tusk and the work that you do out in Africa? Well, uh, the answer is the pandemic has obviously had a huge impact right across Africa. Um, Interesting enough, probably not so much from the health issue, but the economic impact has been immense and hundreds of thousands, probably millions of jobs have been lost and livelihoods impacted. And so uh, that's what we've really seen. Um, as a charity, I'm pleased to say that our supporters and donors have been immensely generous and really stepped up to the plate. So it's been very much about how can we most effectively support the projects and our partners through this crisis, and in particular keeping rangers on the front line. And are you seeing a gradual recovery now? I think it's a little bit too early to say gradual recovery, um, but hopefully we will start to see uh, Africa opening up with the travel industry returning, um, but many people out there feel it's going to take a number of years for us to get to pre-COVID levels. And we need that travel industry in order to help underpin the revenue that drives conservation and the protection of national parks and reserves. And can you believe, Charlie, that next year will be the 10th awards? It must be something that you're terribly proud of. You know, when we originally had the idea with Prince William when we discussed it uh, one evening, um, we came up with the idea, you know, none of us really knew where it would go and whether it would resonate and people would enjoy it. And 10 years on, or nearly 10 years on, it, there's no doubt in my mind that, uh, you know, we have hit upon something which is incredibly valuable and important to be able to show uh, the world some of the amazing work and people that are working in conservation across the continent. Very valuable, very special, and I hope tonight out there you have a fantastic evening. Thank you, Charlie. Thank you, Helen. Thank you. As Charlie will tell you, Tusk is indebted to the support of many, many people. Among those are Tusk's loyal ambassadors, who continue to play a crucial role in raising awareness of the work of Tusk. But what is it about Tusk that elicits such warmth and commitment from its ambassadors? Let's hear from a few of them. To protect Africa's wildlife from harm has never been easy. And that's why Tusk 
hold these annual Tusk Conservation Awards. As a Tusk Ambassador, I cannot be prouder to support their incredible work. The Tusk Awards Night is an inspiring night for me because when I see all of those amazing conservationists in one room who are up for their awards, it gives me hope. The Tusk Awards are actually one of my favourite nights of the year. They are so uplifting and so positive and they really shine a light on the heroes of the conservation world, the people on the ground dealing with the issues day to day. I always come out of the awards feeling so thankful to have been in the room with these people, um, to have learned more about their work, to have met them, and I think it's so important that we support them and thank them for their amazing commitment. It's really important to me as an ambassador because I know the amazing amount of hard work that goes in to protecting some of the most vulnerable species on the continent and that is what Tusk does incredibly well. What these awards do is really showcase the very best of people working in conservation, working on the front line, in the field and it's really important that um, their work is recognised. It's time now for the prestigious Prince William Lifetime Achievement Award. So let's head back to the auditorium and rejoin Kate. Ladies and gentlemen, we now turn our attention to the final award of the evening, the Prince William Award for Conservation in Africa, sponsored by our headline partners, 91. The Prince William Award is a lifetime achievement which recognises outstanding dedication and exceptional continued contribution to conservation in Africa. Simpson Urikop has dedicated a lifetime to the protection of a critical population of desert adapted black rhino in Namibia. Having risen the ranks over 30 years from a tracker, now leading Namibia's premier rhino conservation organization. Without his steadfast loyalty and hard work for Save the Rhino Trust, this unique rhino population simply wouldn't exist. His ability to connect with and inspire not only his team, but traditional leaders, politicians, donors, and even royalty has earned him worldwide admiration. He is without doubt a very worthy winner of this Lifetime Achievement Award. Let's find out more about the incredible work of Simpson. I can tell you that we know most of the rhinos. By name, by coat, we know them. And the guys call me and they said, Tegla was shot. You know, I was like, I was with my family, but immediately, I mean, my, my brain switched off. You see an animal that you have been known for so long lying in front of you with lots of blood, being shot, wounds cut off. It's very sad. It's really sad. Samson is a very passionate person, um, very dedicated to his work, has a lot of skills and experience working in the field. He's not just a CEO that sits in an office and gives instruction. He's a CEO that goes out in the field and gets his hands dirty. I try my best to always come out and, and see the guys and talk to them where possible. To work, to work, to sing a lot, yeah. Sing a lot, okay. Everybody knows him, everybody knows his work, but he also has added value because of his personality. He's just a people's person. I know Samson for a long time, more or less studied together in SRT. He is a good person. I mean, he's the one who trained me how to track rhinos and to do everything within Save the Rhino Trust. Samson is a very soft-spoken, gentle giant, if I might call him. He's quite a big man. He's also a, a, a community leader for the entire community. Everyone knows Samson. People in the community look up to him. He is the face of Save the Rhino Trust. Without him, I don't think we would have had the success in that population as we do have now. 
He has a very good relationship with the traditional authorities, which I think is key. People trust him. When he says he's going to do something, he makes sure it's being delivered. I feel that I can always stand up, go out to the field with all the challenges that's there, and do the job with them, and make sure that our rhinos are safe for the future generation, for the little kids that I'm growing up now. He, he just loves rhinos. I mean, it's difficult for me to tell you the relationship that he has. And when he speaks about these rhinos, it, there's always this spark in his eyes. I constantly get calls over weekends from Simpson. He, he doesn't even greet me. He just says, like, Pity, there's a new black rhino calf. Nana has an A-size calf. Or we found Speedy again. And I think that epitomizes Simpson as a person. Even being the CEO, he still ex gets excited about rhinos. So, but there's always a team there. In Namibia, all black rhinos belong to the state. I'd say the Rhino Trust, they have been in collaboration with the ministry looking after um, the rhinos in Konene since the inception in the 1980s. That area has gone through a severe drought over the last 10 years. So Simpson, as a leader, has been at the helm in probably the most difficult time for the organization. He has put in so much effort in saving rhinos, traveling away from us for weeks, months, years, so he deserves this achievement. With efforts like we've had with Save the Rhino Trust, we've brought poaching down and we have a, had a dramatic reduction since 2015 in our poaching numbers. Samson has actually sacrificed his life for rhinos. I am Samson Urikop, born Namibian, and I'm the CEO of Save the Rhino Trust Namibia. So to present Simpson then with his, his award, can we please invite His Royal Highness back to the stage. And it is with great pleasure that I ask you, ladies and gentlemen, to please now welcome the winner of the 2021 Prince William Award, Simpson Uikob. Your Royal Highness, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, it is an honor and a privilege to stand here today to receive an award that has been my dream to receive. 30 years ago, I started working for Save the Rhino Trust, Namibia, as a trekker, and have since worked my way up as the first black chief executive officer of the trust. I always hope this day would come, and I am both grateful and surprised to have been selected among so many deserving nominees. I would like to thank God, my colleagues, and our supporters for working alongside me. To my family, especially my wife, that was lucky enough to come with me today to the UK. <laughs> who graciously allowed me to leave them for days, weeks, months, and even a year. Receiving this award and others has demonstrated to me the value of my lifetime work in conservation. This honor will no doubt increase global support for Save the Rhino Trust, 
Namibia, as we remain steadfast in protecting the desert adapted black rhino in its habitat. Conservation needs dedication, dedicated, responsible, committed, and strong leaders. And this is the time for the younger generation to prepare to take over. It may not be a career that can make you rich. However, safeguarding nature for future generations is priceless. <laughs> the only qualification you need is to be a human. <laughs> we are duty bound to protect our natural resources and rich biodiversity we inherited during our time here on Earth. Thank you all. Kai ayos, kai ngues. And thank you so, so much. We look forward to celebrating with all of you afterwards. But now, can I please invite His Royal Highness to say a few words as Royal Patron of Tusk. Thank you, Kate, and good evening, everyone. As always, I'm delighted to be here again at the Tusk Conservation Awards. Early this evening, I spent time chatting to the award winners and finalists. Their courage, determination, and commitment to African conservation is deeply humbling. As ever, it's been fantastic to see their outstanding work on the big screen. These wonderful films really bring their powerful and inspiring stories to life. Thank you to all those involved in creating these beautiful films. And thank you to everyone else, particularly all the sponsors, for making this evening possible. It's been two years since we were able to stage a live Tusk Awards event. In that time, the world has been turned upside down as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic. Africa has been hard hit as economies, jobs, and livelihoods have been devastated by lockdowns and travel restrictions. Many of the Tusk projects I've been lucky enough to visit have been hugely impacted, particularly where there is a dependence on tourism to underpin their conservation work. The work that Tusk does has never been more important. I'm immensely proud that the charity responded so swiftly to the crisis by launching its brilliant Wildlife Ranger Challenge. Generously matched by the Scheinberg Relief Fund, the initiative has raised $13 million to date and help secure the employment of some 10,000 rangers throughout this difficult period. Indeed, the role of honour that we just saw is a stark and sobering reminder of the bravery of the men and women fighting as rangers to protect Africa's wildlife and the tragic and needless human cost of this issue. Africa remains on the front line of conservation, playing host to the most awe-inspiring diversity of fauna and flora. The forests and savannas of this vast continent are a precious form of natural capital. This not only underpins economies and supports biodiversity, but plays a critical function in our battle against climate change. In the aftermath of the COP26 conference, it is clear that we must see the environment conservation and climate change through the same prism and not in isolation. Africa's extraordinary rich biodiversity has the ability to sequester vast amounts of carbon. But this is only possible if these landscapes remain truly intact and are protected as functioning ecosystems. Our wildlife plays a vital role in keeping nature in balance and maintaining this precious cycle of life. If we keep destroying or removing the threads that make up the natural tapestry of life on Earth, 
it will simply begin to break down. But it is imperative that the natural world is protected, not only for its contribution to our economies, jobs, and livelihoods, but for the health, well-being, and future of humanity. We owe it to our children and future generations to act now. Let me finish by congratulating our finalists and award winners again. Thank you, Tusk, for shining such an important spotlight on their incredible achievements through these awards. Suleiman, Julie, Caleb, Rachel, and Simpson, you are truly inspiring and give us all hope that change is indeed possible. Thank you. Congratulations to Simpson. What a deserving winner. We'll be talking to him shortly, but first, I'm honoured to have been joined straight from the stage by His Royal Highness, the Duke of Cambridge. Sir, welcome to the Hyde. How do you feel about the judges choosing Simpson as the winner of the Prince William Tusk Award? Oh, well, I'm obviously deeply thrilled and honoured and proud that Simpson's got chosen. I mean, he was. I, I met him a few years ago, and uh, I, you can have a certain eye for people, and you think, He's got to win one day, and I'm so glad that the judges have deemed this year to be the fit year that, um, that Simpson wins. I think he's done a phenomenal job, and I'm, I'm just so pleased for him. That must have been a wonderful experience. I know that Tusk was one of your very first patronages. How much, uh, sir, do these awards mean to you? Something about Tusk really caught my eye, and it was particularly at the time around the need for conservation models. Um, and what Tusk had done was work very closely and very brilliantly with community conservation. The idea being that if you don't buy the locals into protecting a species, then you're not going to win. And Tusk was at the forefront of that back when conservation was still going through a period of reflection and modernisation. Your Royal Highness, I know you have to go, but I gather Simpson is in the wings. Here he is. I'll step back and... How much does this mean to you that you've spent time with Prince William and here you are holding this very special award tonight? This is the putting of my life, I would say, as a conservationist. I mean, I, I've seen my value now, so it means a lot for me receiving this award. Oh, it's a very special moment. We're very proud of you, Simpson. That's we will you let you go, sir. Thank you very much. Not and I'll all. carry on with Simpson. As well as holding this beautiful trophy, you also receive a, a, a fund, a, a grant. Tell me about next year and how that fund will help the work. That you do. fund will have actually solved a big problem for me that I had. Because now I will be able to give my staff a raise on their salaries, which was a, a problem for years and also the traditional leaders, the meetings that we're having, I will be able to spend some of that money on those meetings. And just finally, in your acceptance speech, you touched on, touched on the uh, younger generation, a call to action to the younger generation. How hopeful, how optimistic are you feeling that they will rise to the challenge and continue the work that you've started? I do have a project within Save the Rhino Trust, um, which is the Rhino Pride, we call it, uh, awareness. And this project mostly focuses on the youth. Um, they form clubs, youth clubs, and they're going out to the field, do trekking, and, and by doing all this, we encourage the, the youth actually to be able to uh, stand up and take over from us at a time. Simpson, I feel absolutely honoured. I actually want to shake your hand. I feel honoured that there are people like you there out in Africa doing such good work. Stay with me as we close the show. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. So that brings this evening's proceedings to a close. What a fitting way, actually quite emotional way, to end this year's awards. If you've been inspired by everything you've seen, then please help us identify future Tusk Conservation Award winners like Simpson and nominate your African conservation hero by heading to the Tusk Awards website. A huge thank you to His Royal Highness, to our sponsors, and of course, our winners and finalists, Simpson, Julie, Suleiman, Rachel and Caleb. Congratulations to, uh, to all of you and thanks for the enormous contribution you make to our natural world. Long may you continue to do so. Now to play us out, I'm delighted to hand over to Tusk Ambassador Jack Savaretti and his band with a track called Tie Me Down. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, Jack, uh, over to you. Tie me down I'll go wide I'll go wide You can't hold down A homeless child A homeless child hey. No man 
was born to be locked up. No man is born to not be free. We're made to live, we're made to love. We're here to touch, feel, and see. When our laws get too heavy, we must teach ourselves to climb. Oh, oh, tie me down. I'll go wild. I'll go wild. You can't hold down a homeless child. A homeless child. Whoa. Behind the mask, behind the pain, behind the flesh and the bones. Behind the laughter and the pain, behind my eyes lies my soul. When my tears get too heavy, we must teach ourselves to cry. Oh, oh, tie me down. I'll go wild. I'll go wild. You can't hold down a homeless child. A homeless child. Yeah.